Hi, I'm Roger and welcome back to the Tractor Tech channel. Splitter Wars 2020 is just 12 days away, so don't forget to tune in on April 18th at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. At the end of my video, there's going to be a playlist with everyone's video submissions. I know everyone's familiar with how a hydraulic log splitter works, but not everyone knows how a kinetic log splitter works or what the maintenance is on it, so that's what I'm going to go over today. This splitter is powered by a Subaru SP170, turns 3600 RPMs like most other small engines. Of course the maintenance on that is the same as all other small engines. You still have to do oil changes, keep the air filter clean, good spark plug in it. On the back of the engine there's a centrifugal clutch so that way if I hit a hard piece of wood and it doesn't split I'm, I don't have a key to shear. The clutch will slip a little bit. So now I'm going to flip around and take the cover off and show you the internals of the splitter. Now the splitter flipped around, I removed the cover and moved the camera in a little closer for you to see. But as you can see right here is the belt. As I mentioned, the engine turns 3600 RPMs. Then I have twin 90 pound flywheels. See there's one here, one here. These flywheels turn at 365 RPMs. Then as the flywheels are turning, they're constantly turning the pinion. You can see it turning there where I'm shining the flashlight. Of course, that's also turning 365 RPMs just like the flywheels do. Then when you're ready to split, you pull up on the handle. This is called the rack. It drops the rack, which is, engages it into the pinion. And it sends the pusher out. That goes all the way and back in three seconds. I have two springs that are hooked to the pusher. These are what retract the pusher. You can see that they're also adjustable. There's four positions for each one. The rack or pusher rides on bearings. I have a bearing back here. Then there's a bearing here and here on each side for a total of five bearings. Then there's a brass plate in here that also helps minimize friction and wear of the beam. So as you can see with a hydraulic splitter you have a hydraulic pump that's constantly turning which is putting a load on the engine making the engine suck gas Then you're going to have fluid and a filter that needs to be changed. I don't have any of that with this splitter. The only thing this engine's doing is keeping these flywheels turning. So once these flywheels are up to speed the engine's pretty much doing nothing. It's an extremely fuel efficient log splitter. I can split for four, four and a half hours on a gallon of gas. So now I know you're wondering about the maintenance on this splitter. It's pretty simple. The belts need to be kept tight. That's just a periodic type thing. Like once or twice a year for me, if you split more frequently, you probably have to tighten the belts more frequently. If you don't split as much as me, you may not have to tighten them quite as frequently. The engine just slides up and back to tighten the belts. It's real simple to do. The rack needs to be lubricated. You just wipe some grease on the underside of it. You really don't have to take the cover off of the splitter. You can just grab a hold of it and slide it out and do that. Then the bearings where the flywheels turn need to be lubricated. I think they want them lubricated maybe every 25 or 50 hours. Whenever I have the covers off, I just go ahead and do that. I occasionally take the covers off so I can clean things up really well. As I mentioned, you can pull the rack out by and lubricate it. I'll just take a tarp strap and wrap around the end of the rack here at the wedge to keep it out. You can reach back up inside and get most of it. I kind of feel like as the pinion runs the rack out, it's going to run grease, get into grease, so that last little bit that you can't quite get is going to get lubricated. Plus, the last bit of the rack is not under very much pressure because usually by that point in time the wood is split. But as I mentioned, I take the covers off occasionally to clean and I'll lubricate it all at that time. The rack, they want it lubricated every like five hours. There's some debris buildup where the bearings run. So to get a good long life out of your bearings, you need to occasionally take a scraper and then just scrape this area off. That's usually why I remove the covers off the splitter to keep things good and clean back in there. Not too hard to do. And also the underside needs clean periodically, but the top is usually the dirtiest. I've had some questions in some other videos about how is the rack holding up on this splitter. You can 
can see it still looks like new. Then the last thing I do to this splitter, like you should do to any splitter, is I like to keep the knife on it sharp, or what some people call the wedge, but I kind of like to call this a knife because it's thinner and sharper than what most wood splitters have on it for a wedge. It's starting to get a little bit dull now. So as you can see, these splitters are a very simple design, but they are reliable. This splitter has 88.2 hours on it right now, and I haven't done anything to it other than just normal maintenance. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit the like button and consider subscribing to my channel for more videos like this. And don't forget to watch Splitter Wars on April 18th.